Hello and welcome to the third video for the online Argon workshop Object Photogrammetry for Archaeology. You should now have basic knowledge of the equipment and how to use it. In this video we will start shooting photos. We will discuss the image capturing strategy and we will also look again into the approach for good lighting setup and adjusting the camera settings for each individual project. Each time you do a photogrammetry project in the field, you go through the following steps. First, you set up the lighting and the shooting environment. Then you position the object inside the environment. Then you set the camera, the focus, aperture and shutter time. Then you photograph the object systematically around from all sides. Then you reposition the camera Focus again if needed and repeat the previous step until you cover the entire surface of the object. In the last step you reposition the object, usually you turn it around, to photograph the bottom side. We have already discussed the importance of controlling the environmental conditions in an earlier video. Shooting in a room with access to exterior light is highly unadvisable for instance. The changing light of sunny and cloudy phases of the day interferes with your setup and camera settings. Room lights are more consistent than the weather, but they can still be a nuisance when you try to remove reflections from your object. With reflective objects, it is bad to entirely enclose the object in one of these light boxes. Less reflective objects can easily be photographed in normal lighting setup. Some people have also successfully photographed reflective objects outside on an overcast day. The clouds in this case act as the light box. When you have your light set up, you place the object in the center of your setup, on the turntable. Make sure the object is stable, because every move can be a cause for inaccuracy in the model. Use supporting material when needed. Try to evenly light your object, because the lighting and therefore also the shadows will eventually contribute to the final color of your model. A setup with three lamps two on both sides and one above is usually okay. But you can get away with less lamps if you use a light box because the light bounces many times on the white walls, lighting the object on all sides. In the end it depends on the situational factors like the power of your lamps and the size of the area you try to light. Online you find many examples of different setups some just using one lamp, many of them very low cost, use them as an inspiration. Now you can place the camera so the object is well in the center of the view. The closer you can get your camera to the object, the more detailed the resulting model will be. However, note that if you want to scale the model, the scale bar should also be in view, at least in some of the photos. Also check whether the object remains in view when you rotate it. Irregular and large objects have the tendency to rotate out of view. Now set the camera. This is one of the harder parts if you are not familiar with photography. You may shoot in full automatic mode, but this is not recommendable. Photogrammetry works best if the settings of the camera are stable. An automatic mode will change the settings during shooting. Especially the full automatic focusing is problematic. What you want is to choose a focus point somewhere in the middle of the object. I mean the middle in terms of depth as measured in a line from the camera. So in the case of a vessel somewhere between the rim near to you and the rim on the other side. Automatic focusing cameras generally take a point of the object nearest to the lens rather than halfway the depth of an object. In the case of this vessel, this may cause the back part to be out of focus. 
so manual focus is highly recommendable. You further need a relatively small aperture or high f-stop. This is because we need a large depth of field to have the entire object in focus. I often shoot with an f-stop of 13 to 16. With a high f-stop, you will also need to increase the shutter time. If your f-stop increases so much that your shutter time becomes half a second or longer, for instance, you either need to increase the strength or number of lamps or increase the ISO. So knowing how to work with a camera in manual mode is really a recommendable skill if you want to learn photogrammetry. Now everything is set. Start taking photos while rotating the object a fixed number of degrees. The increments of rotation depend a bit on the complexity of your object. Small increments of 10 degrees are generally fine, resulting in 36 images for a full rotation. But with many objects you can go for less, like this example that takes a photo every 30 degrees. Take in mind that photogrammetry requires much overlap between the photos. Between 60 and 80% overlap is recommended. When you have finished your first round, you raise, or lower, the camera on the tripod and aim it again on the object. You may have to refocus in this step. Again, you rotate the object incrementally. Depending on the size and complexity of your object, you repeat these steps until you have fully covered the object with enough overlap, also between the different elevations. Usually two or three rotations on different elevations are fine. Next you will have to turn the object around and do the same with the bottom side. While taking photos it is important to keep track of what part you have covered, so count your rotations, or better still, mark the increments and mark the start and end point on your turntable. The sets of photo of the top side and the bottom side have to be processed separately. In fact, after every little move of the object or the scale bars, you need to add the photos in a separate group or chunk in Metashape. This is because the turntable and scale bar appear in both groups the same way while their relative position to the object is changed. Unless we mask out the entire image apart from the object, you cannot process these groups together, as it will confuse the software. We will discuss in a later video how to approach this challenge. Photographing some objects for photogrammetry can be quite a challenge. Especially problematic are shiny, dark and monochrome objects. This crater is all of them and gave me quite a headache. So why is it that reflection is such a problem? Well, look at these photos of this Kylix. Especially the foot is highly reflective. A problem that persists even inside an evenly lit box. It wouldn't be such an issue if the reflection would move along with the rotation. But the reflection stays on the same spot of course, while the vessel changes position. The photogrammetry software may thus recognize the reflection as a feature that occurs on the same spot at every rotation and tries to match it. But this usually results in wrongly projected points or simply a gap in the data. Many people working with photogrammetry therefore use ways to reduce the reflections of the objects they want to scan by using special dulling or powder sprays. This is also the only way to photo scan transparent objects, like this glass fruit bowl. But in the case of many artifacts, apart from the case of flint, conservators and archaeologists are not too happy spraying them with a coating. Moreover, if you want to capture the color of the object, you do not have the option to spray its surface with some substance. In the case of the crater, 
I had an additional problem of a lack of recognizable features in the dark black areas. As I was allowed to use wax on the object, I dotted the black areas with small amounts of wax. It helped a bit, but the resulting 3D model had a very ugly and rough surface. So I ended up manually smoothing everything out. Also the wax blobs had to be removed manually in post-processing. Also, in the case of the Skylix, I tried many things. Due to the reflections on its foot, the software was not able to reconstruct this part, no matter what I tried. I even went back and did another photographing session with a different background and a different lighting setup. It did not improve, and I ended up fixing the foot by hand in a 3D modeling program. Of course, I used the photos as an accurate reference. I then re-imported the model in Metashape to generate the textures. In the end, every object presents a different challenge to the photogrammetrist. And some of them can be easily solved. So be creative! This was it for this video, in which we discussed the approach to photographing an archaeological object for photogrammetry. In the next video, you will start to do some work yourself. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.